What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Bigfoot Bass Guy TV. In this episode, we're going to show y'all how to target and how to catch winter bass that are under boat docks. Here we go. John Bowling from Broken Bow, Oklahoma. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Hop in my car and get it up. Get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Hop in my car and get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Okay, so first things first. This is going to work with docks that always float. Kind of unfortunate here at my lake. All of our docks have to float. They cannot have poles on them that go all the way down because the because this lake's water level is always going up and down. So that being said, all of these docks float. As y'all can see, they're on foam pads, floaties, whatever that you want to call them. But what I'm going to show you today is the baits that I use because there's only like four or five baits that I use and how to target them with and without live scope. So let's get into fishing. Let's catch a couple and see how we can do and see what we can't figure out. So y'all stay tuned. Here we go. Okay, so starting out, let's go over the baits real quick. My number one go-to bait that I'm gonna go to more often than not over everything else is a five inch spoon. Can be a Strike King Sexy spoon, can be a Lake Fork spoon, can be a River to Sea spoon, whatever spoon you like, the five to six inch model. Now, every so often, it depends on the bait that is around where you are at. So, let's say you're fishing Lake Fork. There's larger bait that's that is around the docks because that's what makes this pattern work is fishing around the bait i'll throw the larger six inch ben parker spoon this is a six inch magnum this is a six inch lake fork spoon not the same thing around the same length well actually this is a five inch my bad around the same length but a lot different girth so that's the first one number two is the alabama rig an eighth ounce head, that's what I'm going to throw on them all, and a 3.2 swim bait. Again, size up your swim baits to the size of the shad that's in your lake and around your boat docks. Number three, this is where it's kind of iffy when I throw this or not, but that is a swim jig. I've got one somewhere. Let me find it. Give me a second. Stand by. This is my favorite. This is the Six Cents Weedless Swim Jig with the swinging head. Six cents axle. This is my favorite. This is my new favorite around docks. So, number four. This is the fun one. Again, this depends on what bait you have in your lake and what you are wanting to target. A big swim bait, a big line through swim bait that the hook sinks into the bait that you can skip underneath underneath boat lifts, pontoon tunes, you know, like right in the gaps, or throw into the open dock, let it sink down, all the way down, at, bleh, all the way down at those fish, and just reel it really slow. That's gonna be number four. Number five is a spinnerbait. You choose the combination you wanna throw, willow leaf, tandem, Colorado, Indiana, that's up to you. But, yet that, but there's the five baits. Number one was a spoon. Number two was an A-rig. I don't really have to get that out. That kind of sets itself up. Number three, swim jig. Number four, big swim bait. Number five, a spinner bait. All right, y'all. Now that we've went over all of that, let's put them to use and let's show y'all how to catch them with these techniques and these baits. Okay, real quick. I think this needs to be said starting out in this video. You do not have to have live scope to catch fish during the wintertime off of boat docks or to catch them off of docks all year long. Does it help? Yes. Do you have to fish everything? No, because you can check it first with live scope. If you don't have live scope, here's what you need to target first. The outside corners of the docks. The outside corners, the outside docks first. Work your way in. They're either going to be out here or they're going to be back here. It's simple. This is where you need live scope is when they start sitting out here in the center, that allows you to see what depth they're at. Are they doing this? Are they doing that? 
If you have live scope, it makes it a lot easier because then you, you can literally watch your bait, go right down to them, makes your life easier, but you do not have to have it. Just wanted that to be known. This video is for the guys with it and without it. Without further ado, I'm getting off here. Let's get to catching. All right, we're gonna start with the, with the spoon first and just see. See if they're still in the same spot as they was yesterday. And yes, I did do a little bit of pre-fishing yesterday. It's okay, it's all good. <laughs> Mainly just came fishing because my wife was out of town. Not seeing very many yet, but also just pulled up here, so. So the way I hop it is real short hops, like one, two. Let it fall, one, two. Cause you're not hopping a spoon like you do when it's hot, like on, you know, like all the humps and ledges. You're just trying to get them to bite it. So you're just hopping it up off the bottom. Like there's, oh, I just had one. So you're just hopping it up off the bottom and creating a reaction strike. It's not going back down all the way at the bottom. You just hop it up like I'm watching them on my screen right now. It gets about a foot over him and I just hop it up. Like I'm not letting it like, if you're out on a hump and you, and you make that, you know, super long cast with that spoon and it goes all the way down the bottom and you pick it up off the bottom and then you let it go back down, you pick it up, you're not fishing it the same way. Doing this, I mean, we're in 45 foot of water. These fish are suspended in 30. So you're just keeping it at that same depth as they're at. You're not ever letting it go all the way down to the bottom. I'm just gonna pitch it out and then just let it start taking line. And watch it on my live scope. Till it gets about where I think it should be. And then I'm gonna hop it and watch them react to it. And we might be picking up the A rig sooner than I thought, because you'll find out which bait that they want best that day. It just takes a little bit of time. Now, good thing about having live scope. This is for the guys. Granted, I get some guys don't have it. If you don't, you can still you can still fish like this. It's just gonna take you a lot longer. What you wanna do is there they're gonna be out here in the middle, on the corners, or in the docks. There's not a whole lot of areas for them to go to. Pan your live scope around and find where they're holding at that day. That way you can go to each side of the docks and hit that same area on every single line of docks. There's some fish out there. Now the good thing about a spoon is say they're sitting way back under the dock and I mean way, way back under a dock. A spoon, the way a spoon falls is it falls straight backwards. So say, I know this might be hard for y'all to see. Say if there's fish underneath that boat lift, but I have to hit them from over here, I can pitch this spoon all the way to the whole, I can pitch this spoon as far back in that dock as I can get it, let it take line with my rod up, and this spoon will shoot straight backwards underneath that lift of that boat. That's why I choose a spoon over everything, if I can, mind you, if I can. Certain situations, it doesn't come in handy or it's not useful because of cables or something like that. But if I, if I can get by with it, I'm using it. It's my number one go-to for the most part. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all this real quick. So see Look at all these fish under here, underneath this dock. 
that's what we're looking for so with this spoon we're just keeping that spoon in them fish just doing this with it right there all right see if we can catch one don't know if we're going to be able to might get there I think we're still gonna catch one. Oh, oh I had him Dude, there's like a hundred right here. I ain't caught one yet, so you ain't wrong. <laughs> you ain't wrong, my guy. There's a bunch of fish right here. Oh, I thought it was tangled. Good thing with a spoon is you can pitch it back underneath the boat slips, you can pitch it into the lifts, you can do all that with one bait. Here's one. Might have hung him, but we got him. A lot of times you'll hang them on top of the head or something because they get to running all around it. No? Well, we got him in the top of the head, but he, he did hit at it. Good little spotted bass right there on that spoon. All right, so the way that I'm fishing the spoon is I'm just going to make a little bitty flip out there because them fish are sitting at about 40 50 foot out from me i'm gonna just gonna let this spoon take line and it'll fall down into them fish and i'll find that spoon on life scope here after a while if i remember to show y'all and i'll show you what it looks like on life scopes you're just gonna let it fall and then i'm just gonna lift it up into all these fish and just constantly keep it rising in the water column see there's another one. Oh, that fish came off There's one. Second pop, I believe. Another spotted bass. On the outside of the mouth again, so that tells me they're just hitting at it. They don't really want it. So my spoon for the day might be a little big or a little small.
probably downsize it before we upsize it. There you go. I think I had forgot to also try to mention when I when we first um, started this video, y'all. The main reason that I like the spoon so much is because you can get it to the fish in a hurry. It takes your A-Rig forever to sink. It takes this thing, not as long to sink, but long. It takes this especially, oh, wipe my hands off. It takes this a long time to sink. That's why I like the spoon the best. Oh, gosh, dang it. Came off. Main tip, y'all, just let it fall right back down into them. If you have one come off, let it fall right back into them. Try not to be too loud. There's a lot of people around. I'm just trying to be super nice of everybody's property, super courteous, and not be real loud. I'm just trying to be super courteous. That's something that that's something that we all that we all need to try to do. Don't matter if you're fishing in a marina like I am now, or whether you're fishing somebody's own dock, by a house, anything. Just be as nice as you can be. Don't go don't go casting all around everything, hitting boats, hitting docks, doing all this. Try to be as nice as you can be. And if you are, they don't care if you I mean, like, right here, there's signs that say, you know, this and that, that you can't fish. But they've been here forever, and what I've learned is, if you come in here, you're super quiet, super nice about everything, not real loud, not hitting your bait off of boats and banging it off of things, they don't care. They only care when you're not taking care of their property or not being respectful of their property. Those were being hard-headed, and these ain't no better. I think I just need to take up golf or something, honestly. <laughs> I don't know, because I suck at golf, too. So <laughs> That's just a lose-lose situation, man. And lose a lot of golf balls. <laughs> Attaboy. <laughs> and hey. <laughs> That's why we can't have nice things. I like that guy, he's a super cool guy. Old Joe. He's a good guy. Boy, howdy. You either hook them and lose them or you hook them and they don't come off. I bet I can get an A rig at them, so. You can catch more. You can catch more most of the time with that A-Rig, but the problem with an A-Rig 
is at the back of these docks is where that you can walk across them, right? Because it's like, let me get up closer. It's a dock, dock, and that is your walkway. Well, a lot of times they'll sit right underneath that dang walkway. Sorry, my mind went blank. And you can't get that A-rig to them where on that spoon, that spoon will go backwards right underneath it. But since these fish are setting out in this dock a little bit, we're going to take an A-rig. See if they'll bite it. Ow, 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 ow. And you never know. Oh, 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 hitting the camera. We might catch more than one because there's a lot of them down there. It is important to state, throw your cheaper A-rigs, like your Yum A-rigs, throw those wires. So if you lose one, you're not losing like 50, 60 bucks. Cause you will lose a couple. I can promise you that, you will lose a couple. There's one. Hung on the crossbar. That gum, and I can see him right there, and I can see my A-Rick too. There we go, we got him. He ain't no big one by any means, but boy, he was fun. bent my A-rig. You can see my spoon down there by them fish. There's another one. You can see him coming up on live scope. That's a decent one. There we go. What y'all think of that one? There we go. On the spoon. All right, y'all. So I hope that helps you out a little bit on, on how to fish docks in the winter. Now, this just isn't in the winter. This applies all year long. The main two baits today, as y'all seen, was a A-rig and a spoon. Nearly broke a rod tip. But I had to pull up in a dock. The lighting might not be great, but I had to pull up in a dock because the wind's getting so bad. I just pulled up in here, so maybe the audio isn't isn't super bad. Hopefully it's a little better for y'all. But let's talk about the rod and reel setup I throw for each of these baits. My spoon, since you're fishing it around docks, I do a shorter rod. This is a seven foot two medium heavy, moderate fast. I treat a spoon around docks like a square bill around wood. You need that shorter rod to make super, super accurate casts. Because like I said before, they don't care if you fish around here as long as you are as respectful as you can be and don't go smacking your spoon off of the pontoons because you hit a spoon on a boat like that, it sounds like a huge shotgun went off. It's loud. So for that, I use a seven foot two, medium heavy, moderate fast, a seven five to one reel, 15 pound line. I think the 15 pound line is a huge deal. It allows, to, it allows the spoon to fall super, super freely. It's not really the word I wanted to use, but I can't think of the word. Y'all know what I mean. It lets the spoon fall super naturally. Let me say that, as naturally as the spoon can. Now, let's talk about the A-Rig. Eight ounce jig heads is a big deal because you want to be able to keep that, that bait in the same spot as long as you can. So, 3.2 inch, six cents swim baits. My favorite color, I think this is Ghost Ice Minnow. That is my favorite color. Here's the trick with the A-Rig. Again, light line. 17 pound 
line on your A rig. Now this is this is monofilament just super super cheap monofilament i do that so if i was to hang a cable if i think it's a bite when i set the hook or if i was to accidentally hit it it doesn't load up as quick and it doesn't dig your hooks into the cable therefore you lose far less a rigs now the rod seven foot eleven medium heavy moderate rod this is a, this is a six cents lux to me this is the biggest deal is your reel throw a six eight to one reel six five to one's good six two to one is too slow anywhere from a six five to a six eight don't go over a six eight to one reel to me it just works the bait too fast you're you're gonna make it rise way too fast so i hope that helps y'all out like i said when this when we had first started this video my top five baits is a spoon a a rig a swim jig, a big line through, and a spinner bait. That's my top five. They're gonna change day to day which one they want, but I guarantee you in that top five, you're gonna find at least three they'll bite. Today, they looked at a, at a, um, uh, mine went blank. Swim jig, my bad, mine went blank. They looked at the swim jig, not a whole lot, the setup on this swim jig is the same as the spoon. Same rod, same line, same reel. Everything. I hope that helps y'all catch more fish around boat docks in the winter. Boat docks can be a great choice because boat docks hold heat. The shad usually go to the docks because of that reason. But like I said, that's my top five. Usually you can find one out of the top five they'll bite. If you have live scope, you're golden. If you don't, you can still do this without it. It's not needed. Does it help? Obviously, but you can still do it without it. Anyways, y'all, hope that helps y'all. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Turn on the notification bell if you haven't already. Thank y'all for all the support. And hey, drop down in the comments. Let me know what videos do y'all want to see next. Do y'all want more of me fishing tournaments days on the water do y'all want some more videos like this of how to tips and tricks what do y'all want y'all let me know down in the comments as always thank y'all for watching bigfoot bass guy tv we'll see you on the next one see y'all later peace